This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. And you know, we've been looking at transcoding in the last three lessons. And you always hear me say, you know, I don't get asked about anything more than, you know, what is transcoding, how do I transcode stuff? Well, let me tell you something. The second most asked question that I probably get more than anything other than transcoding is what do I do when I'm done? How do I back a project up? You know, how am I going to take this, put it on a hard drive and stick it on a shelf? What's the easiest way to go about doing that? Well, there are two sort of, you know, methods to backing up a project. One is the free method, of course, which, you know, in many cases is not the ideal way to back up a project. And the second way is with a third party utility that obviously comes with a cost. Now, I'm going to show you both methods, the free and the paid version. Now, for me, which method do I use? Well, I use the paid version because for me, when you see how that is done and the process that it takes to back up your project, you might say to yourself, you know what, it's worth me investing this little bit of money to make my life a lot easier in the end. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And as you can see, I have a timeline up here. Granted, it only has three shots in here. But as I said before, really this technique is gonna work whether you have a sequence that's 30 seconds long or a sequence that's two hours long. Now, if you want to archive all of the media, so let's say your timeline, all the clips that are in it, all the clips that you captured, transcoded, if you want to archive everything, what I encourage you to do is to actually skip ahead to the second part of this tutorial where I'm going to show you a third party utility that you're going to be able to use to take that media and archive it very quickly. In this lesson, we're going to focus on taking just this sequence not any of the other media that we may have captured, but just the media that's in this sequence, and we're gonna back just this up, okay? So like I said, we've got our sequence here, three shots in it. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to take what's in this project and remove everything that's not associated with this sequence. Now, most people think I'm just gonna do that in the bin or the bins themselves, but I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate up to tools and I'm gonna come down to media tool. Now, what I'm gonna do is inside the media tool, I'm gonna select my media drive, which in this case is only gonna be my G Speed Studio RAID, and I'm gonna select the current project that I'm working on, which in this case is Media Composer 101. I'm gonna select the master clips, the pre-computes and the media files. Master clips are fairly straightforward. They obviously represent the clips that are in your bin. The pre-compute files represent all that has been rendered in your project. Now, pre-computes could also be, you know, titles, they could be rendered clips, they could be anything like that. And last but certainly not least, I want to show all of the media files as well, the actual media that's living on my hard drive. So I'm simply going to say okay. And basically what I have now is all of the clips that are associated with this project. Now the cool thing is that if I actually sort this by the clip type, master clips remember will always appear at the top. I'm going to press command and E on the Mac, control and E on Windows. I even have some clips of some elephants in here, which to be honest, I'm not even sure how they got in this project. But this is actually a good example of, you know, depending on what you're working on, you could just end up with some really weird media in your project. Okay? So what I want to do now is I want to have Media Composer show me everything that's associated with this sequence. All of the clips that are associated with this sequence inside of the media tool. Basically, all of the media that's associated with this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my sequence, I'm going to navigate up to bin, and I'm simply going to come down and ask Media Composer to show me the media relatives. Basically, look at this sequence and show me all of the media that's associated or that's relative to this particular sequence. Now as soon as I say OK, you're going to notice immediately that three master clips are highlighted plus these three actual media files. Now, because I don't have any pre-computes that are associated, any renders or titles or anything like that, none of those are going to be selected. Now, as soon as I do that as well, you're going to notice that it's done it in the bin as well. Okay. Now, remember, we don't want to delete this media. This is the media that currently lives in our timeline. 
What we want to do is actually select everything else. So all I'm going to do is inside the media tool, I'm simply going to navigate up to bin and I'm going to tell media composer to reverse the selection. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is simply say delete. You'll see that I'm going to delete 32 video files, three audio files, 36 video files as far as pre-computes. And we've got linked uh, 15 or linked delete 15 me metadata files. So I'm simply going to say, okay, it's going to ask me if I'm sure that I want to delete everything. Now, this is where you need to make sure that you actually reverse the selection. So you're selecting everything that's not associated with this project or with this sequence. And I'm going to say delete. Now what's important to keep in mind is that all of your media in your sequence should stay online. That's okay that it went offline here. Cause remember that was that elephants clip, which I don't really care about. The only thing that I care about again is the media in my timeline. There we go. Okay. Perfect. It's all still online, but now you'll notice that in my bin, if I navigate up to bin and I say select offline items, it's going to show me those clips that don't actually exist in my sequence. Very nice. Okay. Okay. So now what do we do? Well, I guess now we're going to go into the actual media files folder. We're going to pick up the media. No, 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 no. That's already too much work. Okay. What's important to keep in mind now, okay, is that with these clips, I've selected, you know, a certain amount of the clip. Let's just say in this case, I've selected, you know, four seconds. This clip is obviously three seconds. This last clip is pretty short. It's only a second. Okay. Well, these clips could very well be 30 minutes long. They could be 40 minutes long. And the whole point of this is we want to back up just what we're using in our timeline. So this is where we're actually going to back the project up. And what we're going to do is we're going to consolidate the media onto another hard drive. Now we're going to assume for argument's sake that I have an external hard drive plugged in. It could be USB, it could be Thunderbolt, doesn't really matter. Okay. And we're going to make a new bin we're going to call this bin. Uh, let's call it MC 101 project archive. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this master sequence and I'm going to hold option on the Mac alt on windows. We're going to drag it right across to make a copy of this sequence. We're going to call it master sequence final archive. Okay. Just like such. Okay. I'm now going to take this bin and I'm simply going to close it. What we're going to do now is again, assuming that I had a third party hard drive plugged into my computer, I'm going to right click on this sequence. I'm going to navigate up to consolidate and transcode. Now we don't want to transcode this sequence because we don't want to recompress the media. What we want to do is essentially make a copy of this sequence onto an external hard drive. And just for argument's sake, I'm just going to use the Mac hard drive as an example. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to consolidate this sequence. Okay. Now, you know what I think I'm going to do? I actually have an external thumb drive here that we can actually use as a test. So all I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to plug that into my Mac pro here and just give it a second here. Okay. There we go. And let's get back into the consolidate window. I'm simply going to select my sequence again, right click consolidate transcode. Okay. And you can see that it's right here, the Kingston hard drive. And this is fine because I don't actually have, the, I've only got three clips. So we're just going to use this as a simulation. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to consolidate the media from this sequence onto this external hard drive. And then we're going to take the project and put it on there as well. Okay. So we've got consolidate selected. We've got our hard drive selected. Now, because like I said, in the example I used, I had three clips. Now we're going to assume for argument's sake, those clips were, you know, five seconds of a 40 minute long clip. So what we want to do is we want to take just the amount of clip that's in the sequence. And we want to add a little bit of handles on either side, just in case a producer or director was to come back to us and say, oh, by the way, Kev, can you just, you know, add a dissolve on this shot or do a little bit of a trim to adjust it? So what we're going to do is we're going to give 48 frame handles. Of course, that is two seconds when we're talking about 2398 frames per second. I'm not going to create a new sequence because I already have a sequence here. We're not going to consolidate only linked media. We can delete the original media when we're done, but I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, we can skip the native media, but I know there's no native media on the Kingston drive right now. And all I'm going to do is simply say consolidate. Now what's going to happen when the consolidation starts is that that media is going to be taken and it's going to be consolidated onto that Kingston drive. Basically media composer is going to go through and it's going to take each clip plus the handles that I've assigned it to, and it's going to send it to that drive. Now you'll see that if I come to the Kingston drive inside of avid media files inside the MXF folder, there are those three media files all set to go. Now, if I come back into Media Composer, you'll also see that with this sequence are those three clips that are now associated with that media drive. If I call up the sequence, 
I can come through, of course I can match frame this. Now I don't have my presets here, but you'll see there's this clip match framed to that Kingston drive. Now of course, if I was to, let's just close this bin here. If I was to pull that drive out, we'll just pull it out just like such so that it disappears, and I come back in a media composer, I come to that project archive, of course those clips are associated with that Kingston drive, they are now offline. But what I'm gonna do here, let me just close this bin again, is I have to put this drive back in because before we unplug it to stick it on a shelf, there is something else that we need. I'm gonna come back to my main hard drive to my Avid Projects folder. I'm gonna come into the Media Composer 101 project. I'm going to come to, of course, my MC 101 project archive bin, and I'm gonna take that bin and I'm gonna copy it over here so that it lives in the same place as the media does. Now what I can do is simply unplug this, stick it on a shelf, you know, forget about it for five years. What I can do when I need it again is I can come back, plug the drive in, simply take this bin and drag it into whatever project I might need it on. Of course, I can come back in a media composer. We'll assume that we've copied this uh, bin back into a project so that it appears right there. All I gotta do is simply double click on it and guess what, all of that media will be back online. Now, of course, the big question is, you know, depending on your sequence, are you gonna want, you know, 100 clips, 200 clips, 1,000 clips in this bin along with your sequence? Probably not. Now, most people think, well, what would I do? Would I delete all those master clips? No, 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 we're not gonna delete anything. We're just simply gonna hide them. All I'm gonna do is come down to the Fast menu. I'm gonna come up to Set Bin Display, and I'm simply gonna turn everything off except my sequences, so those clips will still be there they just won't appear in the bin. The only thing that will appear in the bin is that sequence. So no matter who comes to unarchive this project, there won't be any confusion about what they're looking for. They're only looking for this one sequence here. Okay, now that wraps up part one of our look at backing up your project. In part two, like I said, we're gonna take a look at a little bit more complex project. We're gonna talk about archiving an entire project, including all of the media, not just the media that's in your timeline, and what the easiest way to go about doing it is using a third party utility. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I wanna thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.